so now we're going to get to the actual faceting of the pavilion I have my stone docked I have found the the groove in the quill so it's now I have to use a tool to tighten up my quill a little bit and I have put a coarser lap on I've got an old I think it's an old 180 here so it's a little bit coarser just to do a little bit of the beginning to the faceting now the way I start to facet okay I'm going to put this one usually one degree lower than where you're going to finish up cutting your facet so I'm oh, actually going to start on 40 because I want my culette angle in the pavilion to end up about 41 which is your lowest angle being a dark blue I want I don't want to make it overly deep so if I do a bit of a you know a bit of a start not what I call preforming but coning and rounding at say 40 and I just jot that down on my paper as well okay just so I remember exactly what I've done okay so I'm going to set the angle at 40 and I'm going to start doing a bit of a rough coning water going I'm lowering it down until it's just hitting the, the lap I don't know if you really need to hear that noise hmm I'm not sure about these videos yet whether to just show the intermittent bits or whether to actually show the video because it can be a bit loud when we're doing this coarse grinding let me know anyway okay So we're starting to get a bit of a cone happening there, a bit of a pavilion. I just want to make sure as I'm grinding away at it that I am lowering it down as well. Right, otherwise I'll end up putting too much pressure on the quill. And at this stage, I just want to get a bit of a, a cone happening. Like I said, we're, we're, we're lacking depth in this rough. So I am going to have to bring in the diameter quite a bit to get the right angles for the pavilion. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to keep coning it until we're not quite at a point. And this is what I do with any stone. I just do a bit of coning. Now I'm going to do a bit of rounding. So I'm going to change the angle to usually you go just above 90. It depends what machine you've got. But if I go just above 90, then when I actually do the girdle, I'll just bring it down a half a degree or a degree. Okay, and now we're just going to do a little bit of rounding. Just to make sure, see where our gem is, if it's centered or not. We want to have even pressure and use both hands to make sure we're trying to get a nice round circumference. And we're keeping an eye on what's happening. So here, I've got a pretty nice chunky girdle and then here there's a bit of a divot and then you're at this stage you're really cutting by ear so you're listening to when it's hitting and when it's missing hitting missing hitting and where it's hitting is a wide part it's a it's a bit it's a, the widest part of the girdle of the circumference so get in there so that needs to grind away a bit more and what we're trying to do is get for this for a standard round breed is get a third of the gem left for the crown and two-thirds for the pavilion 
and this is why I go backwards and forwards from coning from developing the cone to rounding <clears throat> you don't just want to keep rounding 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 bringing the jam in and in and in and in into a big cylinder until you've got enough room so where it's sitting where, where we can hear it is where there's <clears throat> too much material okay and we need to bring it down quite a bit yet because we've still got quite a bit from the from an actual point from a kilowatt got a pretty solid girdle all the way around so I don't know if I'm going to need to move this gem over we also want to be looking and making sure there's no flaws that are that have become apparent since we started so it's a matter of going back and forth between coning and rounding coning and rounding And making sure we're going to have the gem in the right proportions for cutting the pavilion and the crown. See that? Can you see that? I'm still working on my technology here for these videos, so bear with me. Now. I am just going to move this stone over a little bit. It, it, it may not really in the end need to be, but I'm going to use this as an example. See how we've got this little bit of thin girdle here? So I'm going to move it over a little bit towards that because here is where it's thin. It's thick everywhere else. So we may need a bit more material here. So what I'm going to do is just heat it up. until I can see the wax getting soft and I'm just going to move it over that way just the tiniest bit and push it down that way when we start grinding again we're going to end up with a bit of a thicker girdle there which will give us enough room for the crown maybe not so important on this particular stone but if you've got a few divots and thin bits and thick bits then yeah it, it can come in very handy for maximizing your recovery just waiting for that to cool down a minute. And I'll just go back to doing a bit of rounding. So you want to lower it onto the lap until it's just missing. Right? Never lower it onto a lap while the lap's going. You want to lower it onto a stationary lap and then just lower it down until it's just lower that angle a little bit, just touching. And that's what you want to hear. You want to hear a little bit of grinding and missing, grinding, missing. Which means we like we're nearly there. If it's just grinding the whole way around, you need to raise it up a little bit and and look at what's going on because you don't want to just keep grinding, grinding, grinding and ending up losing too much of your stone. You only want to have to grind enough material to end up with a third of the rough, a third of the depth, to cut the pavilion. Oh, turn our water back on. Now, once I'm pretty sure I've got it rounded on a core. See, we've got some low and high areas there. Wait till we've still a high area there. We want to wait till it stopped cutting. 
So we're doing this by ear. We're listening. To when it stopped happening. Okay. I've got plenty of room here for the crown. So I think by the time I bring down that cone a little bit, we're going to have a nicely proportioned stone for cutting. At this stage, I'm going to swap over to my 600, worn out 600, because we don't need to go any further with a nice coarse grind. Okay. Oops, lift it up a bit because it's hitting water everywhere. Now, we can just lower our angle just a tiny bit, but that'll become more important when we're on to pre-polish, because we don't have to polish the whole of the girdle of the stone. We only need to polish the, the bit that's going to be, to end up being the girdle of the finished gem. But sometimes it's a little bit easier if we just lower that angle slightly. Right, and we can see it's starting to get a nice fine, a little bit high spot there still. Nice even pressure. I'm going to go back up and I'm going to start cutting some mains in, just roughing some mains in at 41. So we did the cone at 40 and now we're going to do the, the roughing the mains in at 41. Okay, otherwise, yeah, because you want the, because the, the, the facet's going to end up triangle, you want the bottom of the facet to cut in a little bit more than at the top. Now the way, you can either go I'm on a 64 index wheel. You might be on a 96 for a round brand. You can either go, when you're cutting in mains, you can do opposite ones and get them to come in even, or you can just go around and try to get them to come in even. What I normally do with a lot of designs, although I don't really need to do it with a round brand, but you can, if, if your index wheel doesn't have it marked, just, just mark in with a texture right so I've marked in my main indexes there it just helps especially if you're starting faceting it just helps you to not miss index okay now I'm going to also be doing this step by st stop cutting or just by listening ready Probably need to go a little bit closer to getting a culet. I don't really have much of a point there, so I'm going to cut a little bit deeper. And I'm going to do opposite facets to make sure that I'm, I am coming to a culet, which I am not quite. I've got a tiny bit of material left there. Lower it down a fraction. And I'm not quite coming to a cure out yet, so I want a nice sharp point there. So I'll just go a fraction further, just lower it down a fraction until it's just touching. And go back over those facets that I've done. Now I've just lowered it again there, so now I've got to go around again. Everybody cuts differently, and you will develop your own technique, if you don't already have one, about what is the best and easiest way for you to facet. Okay, so I'm pretty confident that I have a nice point there, 
So I'm going to fill in the other four facets and we're cutting by ear because we've still got to go to pre-polish. So we only need, to, this is really what we call roughing in the mains. They don't have to be perfect at this stage, but we have our proportions of our stone. We have our rough diameter. We have our mains cut in. Now at this stage, I'm just gonna go back and check my girdle while I'm on a 600. Just make sure it's perfect. There's no high spots, no low, low spots. So I'm just raising the height until it's just missing, then lowering it down until it's just touching. And we're just double checking that we've got rid of all the little bumps and that we've got a perfectly round stone. And I am pretty happy that that is round. And one way we can check is by getting our calipers and rolling the stone. It's 8.5 millimeters diameter. So we just have to roll a stone, 8.4, around in the calipers, holding the calipers steady to make sure. Now, if your calipers are going up and down and up and down, then obviously your stone isn't round. But I'm very happy that this one is round at this stage. I'm going to go back and just check by ear my mains. Every, every stage that you go through in faceting a gem needs to be right. And if you make one little mistake, say at this stage, at the grinding stage, then it's going to carry through to pre-polish and through to polish and it's going to end up all over the place and you're not going to know what's happening. So we need to make sure at every stage that we get it as perfect as possible. So I'm just going to lower it down, it's on, on 64, lower it down till it's just touching, just touching, we can hear that, just touching. And we want to cut it until it's just missing. Just fine tuning everything before we go on to the next step. Okay, now we've done that with listening by ear. Now we need to look. You need to do it by eye. And you can see there I've got about a third of the stone to do the crown and two thirds for the pavilion. So I'm really happy. I haven't wasted any material here. Might be a tad of a shallow crown. But that's okay. For a dark blue, that, that's fine. It, it'll work. And I'm just looking now and making sure that every single facet comes up to a nice point with the other facets. And if you've got some that are deeper cut or too shallow, now is the time to fix them. But I am really happy with that. And now I'm on to pre-polish. See if I can get that in focus. Now I'm still trying to work out the hang of this video thing. And I might actually start another video because this one's been going for 20 minutes. Okay, but we have a nice gem all ready to start on pre-polish. Okay, thank you. I'll be back soon. Bye.